Hi there. Hey, hi there. What are you doing? Can I see? No, too difficult. Momo's work very difficult. So, your name's Momo. I'm Kate. Momo do like Hans. He draw. Hans? Don't disturb Momo. Momo work difficult. Will you show me your drawing? No, not finished. Go away. I guess I'll let you continue working. I need a key. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker. Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. I would like to see my room now. As you like, miss. I really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. I wonder who can help me. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say? That you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans' house. Excuse me? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Ah. Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. Momo sad, but Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. That's enough, Momo! Stop pestering the lady! Now go on, scram! Get out of here, you hear? What was I saying? Oh yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Valle d'Elaine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Anna Varlberg is dead? Here's your room. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. Marson and Lormont, how can I help you? Can you put me through to Mr. Marson, please? It's Kate Walker. Hold the line, please.
Hello, Kate. So tell me, how's the case going? I've just got to Valady Lynn, and there's a slight problem, Mr. Marson, I'm afraid. Mrs. Vorlberg is dead. Ah, that's most unfortunate. But I seem to remember we made provisions for just such a sad eventuality, and we know that there was no heir. Yes, that's right, but... So where's the problem, Kate? Contact the notary right away. I'll get my secretary to fax you his address and an introduction letter from the firm. Very good, Mr. Marson. Right. I gotta go, Kate. Keep me up to date, okay? I just... I'm back again. Miss Walker? A fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Certainly, ma'am. Immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you. At your service. I'm gonna go look around Valady Len. See you later. As you like, miss. Hello, sir. Miss Walker, I presume. Have you had a good journey? Everything went very smoothly. Thank you. Do take a seat, Miss Walker, please. I imagine you are aware of the business that brings me here. Of course. I was waiting for you. Uh, Miss Walker, I am afraid that the sale of the Vorlberg factory is not as straightforward as it first seemed. Whoa there. Everything was agreed. We'd obtained Anna Vorlberg's consent, and her death does absolutely nothing to invalidate that. Now I have to be back in New York the day after tomorrow, Metro Alphotair. My client and I are impatient to seal this deal. I understand only too well, Miss Walker. <clears throat> there is a... An heir, Miss Walker. Excuse me? An heir? But Madame Varlberg never married, as far as I know. 
And in my last conversation with her, she absolutely never mentioned this detail. Miss Walker, believe me, I was more surprised than you are. Anna Vorlberg sent me a letter two days before she died. Understand, Miss Walker, that had I known about this earlier, I would have informed you. I shall read you the document in my possession. <clears throat> I am so very old. It seems that today life is slipping away from me more quickly than I imagined, and I fear that I will not be of this world to sign the takeover contract for my dear factory. So, I must make this confession to you now. My brother, Hans, is still alive. It would not surprise me if you find this difficult to believe, but it is indeed the truth. You must remember his death, his funeral, too, even though you were very young at the time. It was but a sordid charade dreamt of by our father. To him, the very idea that his only son should wish to leave Baladilen and abandon the family business was unbearable. When Hans left, he preferred to think him dead and make everybody else believe this too. He obliged me to bear this terrible secret as well. I repeat that Hans is still alive, so when I die, it is he who becomes the sole and rightful heir of our factory. Okay, I see. If Hans Varlberg is not dead after all, then I just have to sign the contracts with him. I suppose you've already contacted him? Where can I reach him? The second half of the letter informs us that Hans Varlberg is somewhere in Siberia. I will leave the document in your hands to read at your leisure. Anna Varlberg had no further information to add? Unfortunately not, Miss Walker. I have told you as much as I know. The situation, in legal terms, is now clear. If you want to conclude this sale, you have to find Hans Vorbeck. Apparently, there is a body lying in the town cemetery. There also seems to be some ghost wandering around Siberia. It seems you have your work cut out for you. Believe me, Miss Walker, when I say that I am most sorry for this regrettable setback. Most sorry. Great. What now, then? Perhaps you will find out more in the Vorlberg factory archives. You will find the key in the waiting room. My role in this affair finishes here with the reading of this letter. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must rest. You see, my health is not excellent at the moment, and my doctor forbids me from working for too long. I will not detain you for any longer, Miss Walker. Do not forget to close the door as you go out. Goodbye, sir. Hello? Kate? Dan, I'm so pleased to hear your voice. How are you, honey? Did you have a good journey? Have you settled in? It was long, tiring, damp especially, but I'm okay. Especially when you... Everything going as planned? Yeah, I mean, well, not really. It's not exactly what I thought it would be. You know, everything's so different here. Actually, while we're on the subject, I managed to free myself up tomorrow lunchtime. I'll come and meet you at the airport. I hope the flight from Paris won't be delayed. We're expected at the Goldbergs about 8 o'clock. I hope you have the time to take a shower and change, my poor honey bun. Dan, I don't think the Goldbergs tomorrow night is really on. Don't worry, Kate. You'll be as perfect as ever. Anyway, you never have to wear much to look really great. Dan, Dan, 
I- I'm going to have to extend my stay here. There's one or two complications. You understand? Kate, honey, what are you talking about? It's only a measly toy factory. The sale isn't going through as expected. I- I've got to stay a bit longer. Dan, you don't mind, do you? But Kate, Katie, you can't do this to me. I mean, it's the Goldberg contract. There's millions of dollars on the line here. I know, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'll get back as soon as I can, I promise. Okay, I- I've got to go. I'll call you back soon. Love you, honey. If that's going to... Mammoth. You draw mammoth for Momo? Ah! Momo, it's you! You scared me! What are you doing in here? Momo want mammoth picture, like Hans' picture. Sorry, I haven't got a picture of a mammoth with me. Take paper and pencil and draw mammoth for Momo. You don't give up easily, do you? Momo, I've got to go now. But see you later, maybe.
Mm, thank you. Momo happy. Now follow Momo. Momo show his secret to Kate. It's a shame this boat's been left to rot. Now it's full of holes. <sighs> there you are, Momo. This is some walk you've taken me on. I've got to say, though, it sure is mighty pretty. Momo come here often. Momo like make splash in water. Why have you brought me here? Mammoth doll in cave. Very important for hands, Anna say. Cave? What cave? Where? Momo not liar. Momo, I've got to go now. But see you later, maybe. Must be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo, listening. Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Um. Momo strong.
Ugh, that ore is all dirty and wet. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me? Momo say yes. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. Can you help me, please? What do? I need a hand opening the dam. Momo say yes. Momo strong. Very strong. Thank you, Momo. Hello? Kate? Is that you? Well, yeah, who did you think it was? Uh, I didn't recognize your voice, that's all. Must be the distance or something. So, spill the beans. What's your up like? You lucky lady, you. Honestly, I never get that kind of break. Well, so far all I've seen of Europe is this tiny village, and frankly, they're not very hospitable. Uh, the whole case is getting really complicated. There's this surprise air I've got to find. Oh, I talked to Lynn who bumped into Josh and she had coffee with the head honcho this morning. He didn't sound at all happy. The client's meeting him tomorrow and when Marston tells him that the sale's not even gone through yet, well, you're going to be pleased you're on the other side of the ocean when that bomb goes off. Yeah, I get the picture. But so, how about yourself? What's up at work? We lost the Sarah Lou trial. I worked five months on that dumb case. I remember. So, for a bit of therapy, I went to Boomies. The sale started yesterday. Wow, lucky. It was absolutely crazy, Katie. Absolute mayhem. You know that blue silk top I wanted? Guess how much I got it for. I don't know. 250 200 $140. <laughs> Just get yourself back here and I'll go down with you. <sighs> like it's my choice. Look, I gotta go. Call me soon, huh? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account of every moment of your great adventure. Get out of here. Look after yourself. You too. Yeah, I will.
Yes, hello? Kate, what happened to you, my poor munchkin? I've been trying to contact you for hours. I'm in Europe, Ma. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involved your father, but uh, that's enough of that. Tell me, where are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valadilen, yeah. I know, it's a bit out in the boonies. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother. Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Ma, I haven't got a lot of time, you know. Frank! Ma, please, I've got to go. Frank! Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. He is as charming as he always was. We spent it. Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back, I promise. Lots of love. Kate! Oh, many thanks indeed. I am most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh, yeah, maybe. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are Model XZ2003. My feet are Model XZ2005 underscore B. Be careful. The Model XZ2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card, on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Yes, Kate Walker.
Invoices, invoices, more invoices. I never knew the factory was in such a bad way financially. These last two years must have been very hard for Anna Vorlberg. Doesn't look like that works. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Kate Walker, I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. You are very kind, Kate Walker. I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent.
Hey there, Oscar. My functions do not permit me familiarity, Kate Walker. Even if you are my first and only passenger. Me? Your passenger? Yes, you, Kate Walker. Is it not for that reason you completed my production process? If you say so. Oscar, if you were in my shoes right now, what would you do? My reasoning mechanism does not permit me to manage problems outside the mandate of my own functioning. I... I have decided to come along for the ride, Oscar. Ready when you are. Your ticket, please? My ticket? What are you talking about? The rules clearly state, Kate Walker, every passenger of this train must possess a ticket. Okay. And where do I get hold of a ticket? Only the ticket vendor may issue tickets. You are in luck. The ticket office must be open now. You should go there immediately. It's you? What can I do for you, madam? But Oscar, it's me, Kate Walker. Correct. Your name is indeed Kate Walker. Oscar, if you... My reasoning... What can I do for you, Kate Walker? <laughs> A train ticket, please. Why, do you sell anything else? The only function of this ticket office is to issue tickets. You are requested to accelerate operations. The office closes in exactly three minutes. What can I do for you? A ticket, please. One ticket? Yes. One ticket. What is your final destination? Uh, I don't know. It's you who told me I had to get a ticket. A ticket to travel, then. you are. Do not lose it. This office is not entitled to produce duplicates. This advice also applies to the accompanying documentation. What's that? The authorization for the release of the train. The ticket officer may ask you for it at any time. But I mean, you are the... Attention! The exact moment has arrived to close this office.
Hello. Okay, so what's new? We've got a problem, Mr. Marson. <gasps> what problem? Come on, Kate, don't beat around the bush. There's maybe an heir. What? Hans, Anna Varlberg's <gasps> brother. Uh, looks like he's still alive. We can't buy the factory without his consent. What? What is this? Where's this mystery brother come from? And more to the point, where is he? What did the notary say? Nothing. I mean, nothing else. You know, sir, it's an odd town here. Everything's odd. The people, things... The situation's not straightforward. I have a small bit of research to do. Listen to me, Kate. Universal Toys is one of our biggest clients. And I don't care how weird that town is. All that matters is that you do not set foot back in New York before you've tied up the deal. Get the picture. Yes, Mr. Marson. You can count on me. I... Darn it! Open it. I no longer need these punch cards.
Kate, it's me again. Dan, I was going to call you. Yeah, yeah. Are you mad at me? I've just called Marson and Lormont. They told me you weren't expected to return this week. Oh, yeah. So when are you coming home? I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. The situation is kind of tricky, you know. At the beginning of next week, I hope. Yeah, whenever. Dan, please. Just hang in there, okay? The stakes are higher than I thought, and you know how much I love this job. I suppose it's neither here nor anywhere to you that the Goldbergs are going to... It is. I mean, it isn't. I mean, Dan, this really isn't the moment. You know I'm thinking about you. I love you, sweetheart, and I'll give you a call when I have some news. Promise. I've got to go now. I've got kind of a, a train to catch. A train? Where are you off to now? This is crazy, Kate. To tell you the truth, I've no idea. Love you, honey. You know that. Kate! I should listen to this voice cylinder. It could give me some interesting information. Things jammed. Hans, where are you hiding? We've got to go home. We're late. Very late. Anna, over there. What do you mean, over there? Please, Hans, we've got to go. It's a secret. You've got to swear. Okay, okay. I, Anna Vorlberg, swear to my brother Hans to never, ever mention this to anyone. It's right there! You see? But it's dark in there. Don't worry, I took a lantern. From the factory. <laughs> Girls, honestly. You won't look so clever when Father notices you've stolen one of his lanterns. because of you. Look, Anna. Look. I've seen paintings like this in a library book. They're like you swore, Anna. It's a secret between you and me. Hey, look. There's something else up there. Oh, come on. It's like a toy. I have to have it. Give me some light. But Hans, it's much too high. Do be careful, Hans. Hans, be careful! For weeks, my brother lay in a 
a coma, hanging between life and death. And then one morning he opened his eyes, but I knew he would never be the same again. We never did return to the cave, and to this day, I have never ever betrayed our secret. Here, this is your stupid train release ratification, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. That is perfect. Right, everything is in order then. The train is finally ready to leave. I am most terribly embarrassed. Such ignorance on my part is inadmissible. I hope you still have confidence in my abilities, Kate Walker. Please, return to your seat and we can leave. Finally. we, Oscar? At the Halls of Residence of Barockstadt University. And do we really have to stop here? The situation is incompatible with the pursuit of our journey. What are you waiting for, then? Wind them up. Find a way. There must be some sort of 
train winding thing just laying around in this weirdo station. I have seen nothing that fits that description, Kate Walker. I guess we'd better find out, then. I do not like this station. The atmospheric humidity is detrimental to my sophisticated wheel workings. I will wait for you inside the train. <sighs> Wimp. Oscar, see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. Hello. You're on my train, I see. Yes, I've come from Valadilene. It's been a long time since I've seen a train here. Students, did you bring students with you? No, I traveled alone. Well, almost alone. I remember around the start of fall, the trains would bring kids from all around the world here to study zoology and botany, paleontology and all that stuff. This was a great university. And it isn't still great today, then? Today, my uh, uh. I feel like I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Hey, anything I can do, miss, you just let me know. All these birds in a station. It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh, no. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Baruchstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years, this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master either. This little world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Whoa! It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare! You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now, what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? Accursed cuckoos. Nightmare. I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major ornithological catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several months back and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. You poor soul. That must be very hard. The worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are going to notice. There's trouble in store. Big trouble. Well, I'm worried. Yep, worried. You don't know where I might find equipment to wind up my train springs, do you? Well, not in this station, that's for sure. And I would know. You might want to try near the wall. So, yeah. Thinking of staying for long, miss? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know, actually. One or two days tops. You see, I've got to wind my train back up so that I can continue my journey. It's just... Uh, if 
If you stay here too long, I might get in trouble. The train should stop, then leave again. That's the rule. Besides, your machine's disturbing the birds. Maybe you could take me up to this wall? If there were two of us, we could find what I need to wind up my train even quicker. Uh, miss, forgive me, I, I gotta stick by the rules. You know, I have to man the station. I don't want to get into trouble with my superiors at the university. Uh, you understand? I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrowstadt, miss. Thing looks like the winding machine I used in the Valadilen station. I've got to find a way of getting the train up here. Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Come over here, please! I have something to say to you! What is it? A message has arrived for you. A message? You have been summoned to see the rectors. They are the highest authority at the university. They want to talk to you. Talk to me? Yes, to the person responsible for the train. So, I'm in charge now, sure, okay. But why would these gentlemen want to see me at all? They do not say why, just that it's very important. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! 
My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? Are you from Barakstadt? Yet. So you're like me. Birds just passing through. I'm stuck here because of my train. Kleine Puska reisen mit uns, no? What did he say? Train kaput. No luck for you. I have a little problem with my train. It's kind of broken. I've absolutely got to get it out of the station. Do you think you could tow it over to the wall with your barge? Lock closed. Barge blocked. But if the locks were open, would it be okay to tow my train then? Por que no? More money for that work. Da, it's possible. My husband say we help you if you give money. Right. And how much do you want? Chiquante. He want one hundred fifty dollar. A hundred and fifty dollars? I don't have that much. No money, no bar. Let me offer you seventy-five. No, one twenty-five dollar. Out of the question. One hundred dollars and not a dime more. Correct. You have barge for one hundred dollar. Great. Now don't move. I'll be back as quick as possible with the money. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Dos vidanya. Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one since it's in line with regulations. Thus, your train will indeed be able to leave and consequently cease to obstruct our station. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train. 
But I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out. For a while. I could work for the money. Please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <coughs> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> You are going to have to be resourceful! To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg! I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that, but bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How dare dare you. A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you. Let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? <laughs> here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen.
Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammothus primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Oh, uh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstad Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Probosidian Order is? The probo -whatian? Ah, you see. There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But, but what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? 
You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. If I were to say Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Bergstadt. What? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here uh, several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir, but I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure, yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Where might I find some forest Sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, well, I'm... Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Wait, don't go. You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me.
Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see I am very, very busy? Uh, no. Well, 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 I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even for Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Baruchstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then... <laughs> don't believe everything you read, miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid grave? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barockstadt, miss. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans Dahl, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your hands and my Varlberg air are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number, and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. What is it you want to know, miss? 
You wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Bauerstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yes, yes indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake, that's all. Nobody tells me anything here, and maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. All right, thanks. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist, and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Uh, conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Uh, fortunately. Our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So, there is a garden in Barakstadt? Oh, the garden. Well, if there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory. How would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station, then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. We never said that. That's not what we said at all. We, we were talking in the conditional. You know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, if, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret... <laughs> It would only be a small local concern, producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right. Nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry. I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen.
Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see? I am very, very busy. Uh, no. I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest sauvignon berries in the station garden. No, not at all. I've never seen your sauvignon things. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. Smuggling racket? Hey, hey lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little on-the-side thing we got going. That's all. It's just for ourselves. Hey, you honest. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university? The authorities should be informed of this. But we haven't done anything wrong. It's not a crime. Can you open the gate to the garden, please? Sure, sure. No problemo. Right away, miss. Feel free to visit the garden at your leisure. And uh, uh, there was just one thing. Uh, I'm not a liar. Not really. Just mum's the word. There is the reputation of the university to think about. And I have superiors. And I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you, miss.
Uh, 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 miss, miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Barrackstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving station. Gentlemen, I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. And while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. Excuse me. Uh, miss, indeed, the- A train should first stop. Here we are, busy chat ch Already? Thank you. And thank you, gentlemen.
There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. Ah, thank you. Not difficult get dollar. See? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We pleased to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma vor vat pensi no sesto, di kleine madam. No se sa ye mar alles non comprendo en allora caput en andere mordel. Zir zwar moi. On boom telefonieren, caput caput. My husband say instructions complicated. No understand manual. My husband angry. Very angry. Oh, now telephone broke. Kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you going to do next? We wait repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Seller always need key for lock. Okay, thanks. Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I thought it's fantastic for a coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far. Especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little... I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin.
Welcome to the East Lock Control Center. To start, press the number sign. If you are using the Holtenberg lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass lock, press 3. If you are using the Barakstadt lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. If you want to raise the water level, press 1. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. You want to lower the water level in the Barrackstadt lock? To confirm your choice, press star. To return to the previous command, press the number sign. Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday and no Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? Right, I've got it! I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. Gott verdomm! Das ist eine echte Ladies! Alle etwa, range alle Dingen and obligados die Dame! Ach, set content on the route again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up. We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay?
Hey there. On the boat. Da, da, barge on other side. You still need us? It must be really neat to travel by river. Oh, schlecht the boat. I don't forget that's grund. For me, loca loca is fantastic. And climb the road with Usted. Okay, you guide. <laughs> Excuse me? My husband say he like his barge and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in tin can, you stay in tin can. Sure. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, Loka Koka Mitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Oh, catch it, sir. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukos at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. 
They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukon population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukon people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. And curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. And this people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question in the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yuko shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice art is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukos' tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. 
the Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation the people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukol's traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukol population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukols have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukols have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lectures should you so require them. Nope.
Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on this subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you've calmed down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Hans, I have some very sad news. Our father is dead. He passed away peacefully last Sunday in his sleep. I feel so lonely now. Father had been but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard, and this terrible war is destroying everything. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much. Anna. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay...
Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it. It's huge. I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's do, and he said you'd argued. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down-in-the-dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down-in-the-dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead, and his eyes mist up, and his eyebrows kind of creased together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody-two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. Just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. I haven't got time to... I haven't got... Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta, Commander-in-Chief of the Barikstadt Border Post, at your service, madam. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. Colonel, sir. Captain, miss. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I am afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together, in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody. And nobody need know. Wine, miss? 
you are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, miss. It's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barrickstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree. Nothing but a dead tree. Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <sighs> miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. What are you doing there, Oscar? It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker.
Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. Hmm? Hmm. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. Your ticket, please, Kate Walker. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. Walker! Kate Walker! Oscar, what's going on? Why has the train stopped? Where are we? The springs of the train are unwound again, Kate Walker. As for the question pertaining to our geographical location, I really haven't the slightest idea. Well, we'd better get looking for a winding machine, my dear Oscar. I hope that this place actually has one. The air here is so polluted that I could not possibly risk leaving the locomotive. My joints might corrode irreparably. Right. Let's see. See you soon, Oscar. I shall stay right here, Kate Walker.
there. And if I were to walk... My dear brother, what joy to have news of you after your long silence during the war years. So, you're working for the Russians now. I tell you, we've been hearing some worrying stories about them here. Just your description of that dingy factory makes me cough. But it's so good to hear that your talent is being recognized for its true value, and that your automaton creations are taking the place of workers for all those menial jobs. I'm so proud that Vorlberg automatons are making such a contribution, even if it is small, to the improvement of people's lives. Meanwhile, back in Valadolin, we've been licking our wounds after the war years. Some people have returned, others not. Life is slowly coming back, but it's taking time. All my love, Anna. Oh my god, Oscar! Oscar, talk to me! Are you okay? Why, it is absolutely inadmissible, intolerable, and... and... indescribable! I... I have been attacked! What do you mean you've been attacked? My hands! I no longer have them! They have been stolen! My god, you haven't got your hands! But who did this? What's going on here? We can be sure of one thing, Kate Walker. That this heinous crime was committed by a barbarian. A dysfunctional individual whose behavior lacks all finesse! Did you get a look at your attacker? Tell me exactly how it happened. I was standing here polishing up my metalwork. I was just thinking that with all the dust in the air, it would be a good idea to... Oscar! I was very busy, and I suddenly felt two powerful arms grab me from behind and tie me up before I had the chance to defend myself. I wanted to call out, but my attacker gagged me before I could emit the slightest sound. Then, he dismantled my hands with a terrifying pair of pliers. It was horrible. I can believe it, my poor Oscar, but did you see him? He was a real barbarian, I tell you. He had bloodshot eyes, steel teeth, and brown scaly skin, and he emitted foul odors. He was a monster, Kate Walker, a real monster, and he had a weapon. Oscar, please calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Right. I'm done. Take care of yourself, Oscar. Good luck, Kate Walker. And don't forget me.
Hello? Hello? Kate, it's Dan. Can you hear me? Da Dan, is that you? I can't hear you so good. Dan? Hey, can't talk. This is a conversation. Are, are you still mad at me? Come on, it's, it's important. Dan, you're breaking up. I'll try and call you when I get out of this mine. Kate! What's happening? Listen, we've got to talk. Look, the line's just getting worse and worse. I'm hanging up. You. Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? What do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back. Now! Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him, and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not joking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary. Real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never! Such workmanship, such precision crafting. It is... It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy. Temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. You can... Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and fulfill my dreams. Everything is now in place. You see... I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, chimney stacks, they've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now all I need is her... <laughs> 
And what if I helped you to make some other hands, just for your automaton? Why should life be complicated when I already have what I need? And I very much doubt you are in any position to create such a perfect pair of hands. I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory! But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. The one and only Helena Romanski. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoldsgrad. She sang here, you know, when our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then, later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age. That is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romanski back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me, and me alone. And is she okay about this? Sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her, when she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made. Then, you know, this was no small achievement, miss. Once molten iron flowed through here, now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. But then you arrived. So lucky, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. So, when will this Madame Romanski come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her, tell her. Hey, why don't you go? The quicker you bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? And you promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romanski was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. A shrine to her glory. It's like her own personal museum, in a way. You should take a look. <laughs> this whole story is completely nuts. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So be it.
Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, the stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Okay, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with the Romanski one, but it was too kind. You know her sister. She's a great soprano. Great! Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arrowbad, but it was 15 years ago and he's not sure. And well, honey, when Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. And thanks again. Catch you later. Director. Ah, it is you, Miss Walker. Director, I think I know where Helena Romanski is. My God, you have found Helena? That is fantastic. From my research, Helena Romanski is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romanski is in Arlbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romansky would be happier here. I think she'll prefer the peace and quiet here. The perfect tranquility of our little town. How can I get to Arrowbad? There is one way that you can. Here, in the city, there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there He'll have something. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Okay, I'm going. Wish me luck. I am counting on you, Miss Walker. Hello? Did I wake you up? I 
can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. Oh, you know, I guess we were both a little high-strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah, I left the door to my office open and I was convinced everybody around heard me. Ah. I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. Promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true. I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And I still no Hans Warlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Hello? Kate! Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia! Great, just the right person. Look, have you heard of Helena Romansky? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. Well, what relations this singer got with the toy coke? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Comcalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that I had a drink or two with Dan because he wants to talk. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other day and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? No! No, not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on him for you at the same time. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that he'll be pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no, no worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. Excuse me, sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, but yoo-hoo, can you hear me? Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff. Oh, holy mother, <laughs> a dame, a, a pretty dame on the launch pad. Uh, please, no need to worry, sir, just do stay calm. I, I just want some information. Watch what you're doing, sweetheart. We ain't got no information, no strategies, no plans to tell anyone, anywhere, anytime. 
military regulations, you dig it back? I was going to... Forget it, it doesn't matter. He's too drunk to help anyone anyway. I am not drunk. I have drunk. A little. <laughs> Strange. Sure, I left a bottle or two around here. I gotta get some air. Wall's getting pretty tight. We'll think about that blast off later, huh? Are you okay, Colonel? Are you sure you're all right? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Be careful. Don't lean out too far or you'll... Ah! What's happening? That's water you got there. Stop it! Now! You want me to drown? Calm down. It's all right. Just a little wake-up call, that's all. You must have had quite a bit to drink. Gee, you right there. Not the first time, either. Probably won't be the last man in my head. Please, could you whisper? Please, do excuse me. But it was the only way I could think of to bring you back to your senses. A little extreme, maybe. But I get the impression you're a lady who likes to see results. I came here by train, but unfortunately it broke down. I've got to get to Arrowbad immediately. Someone told me you might have a vehicle to lend me. Someone? Who might that someone be? I hope you're not talking about Sergei Borodin. Well, <laughs> yes, I am. The director of the industrial complex below. Be careful, ma'am. He is not a rational man. He can be mean and very dangerous. He suggested I come and see you, actually. But I get the impression that he doesn't care much for you, either. I don't care what he thinks of me. All I say to you is, watch out for him. There aren't many vehicles on this base. When they decided to close the Cosmodrome, they towed all the useful equipment away. It doesn't matter. 
I'll find some other way. If I can help you, please, just ask. Does Arrowbad mean anything to you? Arrowbad? It's been a long time since I heard that name. It's a spa resort, man. Top brass of the regime would go there. As well as convalescing soldiers, tired politicians, profiteers and rackers, the whole kaboom. Go live it up, all expenses paid. One privilege I never got. Just two steps away from becoming the nation's hero. No free holiday for me. And where exactly is this place? Further east. We never had to know where exactly. The airship was programmed to take vacations there. From here. Thank you so much for helping me. I'm sorry to have woken you up like that. It's been great talking to you, ma'am. I think I'll take 40 winks right now. Jam. I need oh, this Can I have some quiet? Do you think the airship still works? No idea. It's been so long since it was used. And then I've got to learn how to use it, too. You won't have any worries there. It has an automatic pilot. Go visit if you want. Here's the key. Thanks. Right, I'm off. See you later. Don't you worry about me. Doesn't look like that works. Comrade Boris, I need a few drops of your blood. Excuse me? To get the centrifuge going, we'll need to analyze the pilot's blood. 
If you're going to the stars, you've got to be in good health, you see? That's why I need a blood sample. It won't hurt. There's two things a good soldier is always ready to do. Drop his pants and spill his blood. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll only be needing your blood. My pleasure, ma'am. I think I've figured out how it works. Get settled in and let's go. <laughs> Colonel, are you alright? Never been better. It's spinning a bit, but I am used to that. I'm a professional pilot. Smog. Can you speak up? I'm ready. Press the launch button. Takeoff procedure engaged. Countdown commencing. Colonel, you've forgotten to tell me the secret of the airship. What do I have to do?
Hello? What do you think you're doing, Kate? I wanted updates. I wanted results. Certainly, Mr. Marson. We all do. Down on the ground, we're doing all we can, but there's no new developments. Kate, I don't think you understand the urgency of this situation. Universal toys are on my back and digging in. I can't hold them off much longer. You're putting the firm in a very tricky situation. I am very sorry, but a slight mishap or two has meant that I've had to modify my mission temporarily. Miss Walker, you're walking on a minefield here. I don't have to underline that this affair is Class A Priority Numero Uno. Hot! I am only too aware of that, Mr. Marson, and believe me, I am doing all I possibly can. But this mission is really no piece of cake. You can have all the cake you want and eat it, too, when you get home. Next time I call you, I want something concrete, something solid. I want results. You understand? Results! Yes, Mr. Marson. Good morning, sir. Good day to you, ma'am. And welcome to the Hotel Kronsky. I don't expect you've made a reservation, have you? Well, no matter. We've got a few rooms left with the sea view. By far the best on offer. Uh, well, actually I wasn't counting on staying in Arrowbad. I see. It's like that then. Uh, so, what can I do for you? Well, thanks anyway. At your service, ma'am. Sir? You again? You're beginning to really overstep the mark. I warn you, one more and I'm going to... But what the hell's going on over there? Why is it me gets hell to pay when there's already too much work to do?
Madame Romansky? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich. The old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? Uh, not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American. A lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You have come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left. Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel must pinch so. I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. You back here again? How dare you show your damn face round here? Get out of here immediately! Please. I absolutely must find... Miss Romansky! Oh, yes. I'm sorry. She managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Romansky, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. Please treat Miss Walker with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madam Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Have you met her yet? This Helena person? What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yes, yeah, she's living in Arrowbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arrowbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. 
It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the air I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romanski's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin. I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home? Tell your boss this air just doesn't exist. That you've done all you can. Et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for. But I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. It's a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm -hmm. People still talk about me? Oh, dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. <sighs> but surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail. And I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Vorlberg. Do you hear, James? Oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George... The barman at the Moritz Hotel heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. Well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. Hello, Hotel Moritz? The reception here. Can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Uh, 
Hello, hotel bar? Hi. I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see old George? Now, he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but... If you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly? Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mamba... Helena! Yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right, I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say. Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me. Doesn't look like that works. My voice. My God, that is atrocious. Horrific. It was too good to be true. George's Blue Helena is powerless. Ineffective on the voice of an old woman. But your voice is perfect. Don't be so down on yourself. You just need to warm up a bit, that's all. After all these years, it's to be expected. No, no, I am very grateful for all your efforts, but really, I cannot go on stage with such a puny, pathetic voice. My performance would be so poor. I would get such bad reviews. You've just got to get your confidence back, hasn't she, Jane? I must concur, madam. It sounds to me like your voice is fully restored. James, be quiet. You are a sniveling little creep.
my voice. My God, what have I done? My voice has returned. Did you hear that, James? My voice, my voice has returned. Your voice is still as magnificent as ever, madam. But please don't forget, you're no spring chicken these days. Time has taken its toll. And you're not the toy boy you once were either, James. I hope you have fun on your own. Madam, leaving you is quite out of the question. Don't be stupid, James. What would you do there? Your place is here. You must prepare my return. Madam, I won't insist. Adventure is not an integral part of my action functionalities. Maybe you're right, madam. As ever. Do I understand correctly that you're going to go with me to Comcallsgrad? You do, my dear. We're going on tour, my dear. Anchors away! I'll go back to the airship to prepare my departure. You can join me there when you're ready. James! Take me to my room. I must prepare. Quick! Quick! What are you waiting for? My fans are waiting for me. Are you sure you're sure about this, madam? Shut up, James, and put your foot on it. Hello? Hi, it's me, Olivia. Hey, sweetie, what's new? How was it at the Goldbergs, then? Like, uh, alcoholic. Is that all? What's up? Cat got your tongue? Well, <laughs> tell me what you're up to. How's the case going? How's that Romansky chick? You don't think it's dragging out too long? I haven't had the time to get bored, I can tell you that, but... Hey, Olivia, what's the matter? You didn't even answer my question, that's so unlike you. Did I tell you I bought this really cool blue silk top? Olivia, what are you hiding? Come on out with it. You've got me worried. Oh, Kate, I'm sorry. I've done something horrible. I can't sleep anymore. I, I can't eat. I keep wanting to hurl. Olivia, tell me what's going on. <laughs> Dan! What about Dan? Has something happened to him? I am weak. You're gonna hate me for the rest of your life, and you'd be right in your situation, I... What? After the Goldbergs, Dan took me home. We're a bit, you know, we shouldn't have drunk so much. He came up to mine to have a nightcap, and then... Okay, you're gonna hate me. Please hate me. I got it. It's all my fault. I could never tell you that I've had the hots for Dan for ages, because... You're my friend, and you were engaged and all, but... But then we got so close lately, and I, I just lost sight of what's right and what's wrong. I... Kate, the guilt is killing me. I want to die. Look, don't bust a gut over it. You and Dan, it's... It's like not real right now. I gotta go, Olivia. I, I need to process this new bit of data. Are you like some automaton or something? Kate, please! I'm hanging up now. I want to be on my own.
Mad. Don't worry. There must be some way of getting you out of there, and I'm going to find it. But do hurry up, my child. I am terrified he will return and become dangerous. Be strong, Madame Romansky. You can trust me. Oh, at last, young lady. I was beginning to be desperate. I came as fast as I could. Now hurry, get out of here quickly before that maniac notices. I've got to get Oscar's hands back. Are you all right, madam? My heart has been put to the test here, but it just might hold up. Let's go. Let's not hang around here. Now. Ha ha! Nice try, Miss Walker. But you are not strong enough. Not for me. So you can stop playing games now. Return the hands to me and bring Madame Romanski back. I shall not be responsible for my actions. You don't scare me, you old lunatic. Helena, grab the hands and get back to the train. Tell Oscar to get ready to leave. I'm going to find a way out of this lousy factory. No chance. You will never succeed. Ha! We'll just see about that. I warned you, Kate Walker. I warned you. Be careful, my child. You too. And don't worry.
on earth is going on? Why is this train not moving? This is not the time to hang around with that madman on the loose. That is a bit of a concern. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Oscar, I'm back. Let's get out of here. What a pleasure it is to see you again, Kate Walker. Please take your seat with Miss Helena in the carriage. She simply is a charming lady. She helped me screw my hands back on. I must inform you, though, that regulations make no provision for supplementary passengers. I hope that you still have your ticket for Arrowbad. Oscar! Message received and understood, Kate Walker. Departure imminent. Hello? Kate, hi. It's me, Dan. Are you alright? I'm okay now, yeah, thanks. But uh, if I said that not long ago I was grappling with a mad music lover who wanted to kidnap an old forgotten opera star, but I foiled his plan and escaped through an abandoned mine, then I guess... It's completely mad. You'd be proud of me, Dan. Real proud. Kate, I don't understand a thing you're saying. I barely recognize you. No, it doesn't matter. How was your day? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I went to dinner with the Goldbergs. I finally beat Bob at squash. Uh, the cleaning woman broke the vase in the entrance hall. Well, other than that, nothing new. I see. Everything's cool, though? Yeah, yeah, everything's, uh, cool. You're not missing me at all? Oh, yeah, sure I am. I had Olivia on the phone. She was a little upset. Nothing to say? I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't know what came over me. It happened so quickly. I just totally lost control. I was so weak, so dumb. I just can't imagine how... I just can't... I can't imagine how you could ever forgive me. What a bastard I've been. I don't know, Dan. Maybe I'm to blame somewhere in all this. Maybe I pushed you into Olivia's arms. I'm well aware that this trip has taken me far from New York and far from the Kate you once knew. And you know what surprises me the most? I don't miss it. What's happening to us, Kate? Maybe we've just realized we don't really love each other, Dan. We can talk about it when you get back if you want. I don't know, Dan. We'll see. Oscar, let's get the hell out of here.
You okay, Oscar? Still in one piece? Humor is a concept outside the scope of my functionality, Kate Walker. You should know that by now. Oscar, come on, quit crabbing. We got out of that dingy city safe and sound, didn't we? And even with a certain style, I might add. Style is the right word. Hey, what are you doing on the platform? That's not like you. I wanted to take a little air and dust away the cobwebs from my joints. This salt wind is terrible, though. I think it would be wiser to return to our nice warm train. Get a life, Oscar. Oscar, I think everything's ready. We can go now. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we can start the engine and get going. I'll be circulating shortly to punch your ticket. <laughs> Give me a break, Oscar. Miss Walker! Miss Walker! Wait, wait! Don't go yet! Mr. Felix, what's the matter now? Has something happened to Madame Romansky? No, no, not at all. Our favorite diva's fine and dandy. But there's a package for you at the reception. I said to myself, I said, Felix, maybe she's got to have it before she goes. A package for me? But that's impossible. But it's got Miss Walker written on it, clear as day. Why didn't you tell me about it earlier? It's only just arrived, like. Oh, and, well, who delivered it? Um, I don't know. I just took my eye off reception for a moment. The game was on, you see, and... Uh, and there it was, on the counter in reception. Uh, come and get it. Okay. Hello? What the hell are you up to, Kate? Mr. Marson, please, do try to understand. Understand? What I understand is this. One, our main client is ready to drop the whole Return. caboodle Return. if the deal Return. isn't tied up in the next 24 hours. Two, this is going to cost the firm multi dineros. And three, I made a serious error of judgment trusting you with this case. That's what I understand. I know it doesn't look like it, but... No but, Walker. Attack! You're looking for a senile old creek and you're making heavy weather of it. You know, he isn't as senile as all that. He's got this creative streak. Look, drop the mumbo-jumbo. I don't want excuses. I... I've got to go, Mr. Marson. I think I'm onto something. Attack! 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 Hello, reception here. Felix Masana at your service. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes, she's right here in front of me, ma'am. Immediately. Please, be my guest. Uh, Miss Walker, Madame Romansky would like you to join her at the hotel bar as quickly as possible. I'm going. Madame Romansky, you wanted to see me? There you are, my dear. I wanted to talk to you before you leave. I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. Despite our mishap in Konkosgrad, I'm very grateful to you. You helped me to forget my life here and this dead beach where I stroll up and down all day, getting more and more bored. So much the better. Time passes so quickly. One day you are at the peak of your glory. You think it is going to last forever. And then one day the bubble bursts and you are washed up and forgotten. Madame Romansky, don't be so gloom and doom. It doesn't suit you. And if there is no one left to help you out, you start to sink. Sink into a long, dark winter. Perhaps you should rest now. We've had a trying time. It's been emotional. You must be tired. When I returned here, 
Hunt gave me such a taste for life. He too was ill. Ah, oh, he coughed. He must have spent too long at the factories, breathing in their smoke. And then he was better. And he left. And I stayed with my memories. Hans Vorarlberg? Hans Vorarlberg was so full of joy, so carefree. He was a little symbol of spirit, of course, as they say. He was a child. A child who made fantastic toys. I think that maybe I loved him. God alone knows where he is today. The plane with the hotel supplies has arrived. Maybe you should take a walk outside. I don't understand. I am old. I am tired. I have been very pleased to meet you, Kate Walker. Goodbye, James. Do look after Madame Romansky. That is all I ever do, miss. May fortune follow your every footstep. The snow is a good sign. Really? The snow chases the wind away and covers the salt and sand on the ground. The air becomes purer and still. Ideal conditions for a constitutional. Great. Thanks for everything, James. Good morning, sir. Mr. Vorlberg? Hans Vorlberg? You've brought the train, then. That's good. Mr. Vorlberg, you have no idea how pleased I am to meet you at last. I'm Kate... Where is Anna? Your sister has passed away, Mr. Vorlberg. I am sorry. Truly sorry. Ah, okay. Otherwise, it's Anna who would have come, right? Not you. I guess you're right, Mr. Varlberg. My name's Kate Walker. I... Kate Walker. Okay, I'm going away on the train. A long way away. Where's that? That way. Siberia. Siberia. Uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Varlberg, I've been ordered to tie up the buyout of your factory in Valadilene. It's, uh, my job, you understand. Anna told me. The automatons. That's over now, isn't it? Mr. Varlberg, the factory belongs to you now, and I need your signature to tie up the deal. Okay. Then I'm going away on the train. Here's the sales contract. I'll give you some time to look it over. Your sister already agreed to the terms. All we need now is your signature. What? You've signed just like that? Without reading it? I can't read. I don't know how to. Oh. In that case, I'll read it for you. No, it's okay. Leave it. I've got to go away on the train, Kate Walker. As you wish, Mr. Varlberg. And let me wish you a very pleasant journey. Yes? Listen, Walker, I've decided to send over some backup. No need, Mr. Marson. What do you mean? Hans Varlberg has just signed. Everything's hunky-dory. Are you saying that... Yep. That Varlberg Manufacturing is now the exclusive property of the Universal Toy Company. But, <laughs> that's great news. Good work. Excellent work, Walker. A real masterstroke. I knew I could count on you, Kate. I congratulate you. Thank you, sir. Right, now get back here as quick as you can. I want those papers on my desk tomorrow. My secretary will organize a meeting with Universal Toys immediately. You'll no doubt want to hand over the contract yourself. And now that I think of it, I've got no one on the Schwann Airport case. Big trial coming up. A real opportunity. The job is yours. My little way of saying thank you, Kate Walker. You're too kind. You have a great career as a lawyer ahead of you, Kate. See you tomorrow. Well done again, and don't lose those papers, huh? 
Now that would be the dumbest thing. <laughs> sure. Real dumb. Kate Walker? Yes, Mr. Varlberg? Are you coming on the train too, Kate Walker? Uh, no. That really wasn't in the plan. But thanks for offering. This adventure's all over for me now, Mr. Varlberg. Too bad. Silly, really. You don't like adventure, do you? I don't really... I mean, maybe there's... <sighs> it's not easy to say. Yes? I have to go back to New York. They're waiting for me there, you understand? I understand. The plane. It's going to New York too, maybe. Maybe. I suppose I'd better go find out. Yes. It's more sensible, maybe. See you later, Kate Walker. Yes. See you later, Mr. Varlberg. <laughs>